live on CBC Hockey Night in Canada. Brought to you by Ford of Canada. On behalf of Ford and Mercury dealers from coast to coast. Ahead and participating retailers and record companies in Canada. The Bank of Nova Scotia with nearly a thousand branches across Canada to serve you. Molson's Brewers of Molson Canadian Lager Beer. Live from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island, New York, welcome to the Stanley Cup quarterfinals. Game number one, Toronto Maple Leafs versus the New York Islanders. With us tonight, play-by-play -play announcer Bob Cole, color commentator Brian McFarland, analyst Howie Meeker. And I'm Dave Hodge. The Maple Leafs coming off two of their best performances all season, the preliminary round victories over the Los Angeles Kings. The Islanders, too, have momentum, though they haven't played in eight days because on the second last day of the NHL regular schedule, they clinched the Patrick Division crown. These teams played only four times during the regular season, and the Leafs had just one victory. However, they don't consider those stats terribly meaningful. Two of the Islanders' victories at the Nassau Coliseum were close games. By scores of 4-2 and 4-3, the Islanders were victorious. However, especially in that 4-2 game, the Islanders were outplayed by the Leafs. Islanders won on goaltending. At Maple Leaf Gardens, Islanders won 6-2, but that was during the time the Leafs found their late season slump. They don't consider that as too important. The Leafs' lone victory was early in the season. Perhaps the Islanders would discount that one. It was 3-2 on Maple Leaf Gardens ice for the Leafs. So one victory, Toronto, three for the Islanders. Islander players to watch. Brian Trache, second in league, scoring 123 points. Mike Bossy, record-breaking rookie, 53 goals. Clark Gillies, the third member of the big line, the captain of the Islanders. And Denny Potvin, with 94 points as a defenseman, was the fifth scoring in the league. Well, the Leafs have their big stars as well. Daryl Sittler, Lanny McDonald, Boria Salming. However, they hope that the Jimmy Jones, the Jerry Butlers, and George Fergusons, who played so well in Los Angeles, can continue to play well. The Leafs looking for big efforts throughout their lineup. We'll return with our Stanley Cup playoff coverage in just a moment. Now, Hitachi brings out its biggest gun for the new 26-inch Luminar 1 color console. Luminar 1, the system that gives you full beam color. Full beams that leave no gaps like conventional systems, but put all the color on the screen. Look at the elegant wood cabinet. It's five inches slimmer thanks to our new 110 degree picture tube. The 26 inch Luminar 1, new from Hitachi. Hey there with that booming shot. Grow with us. Hey there making that big stop. Grow with us. Scotiabank Hockey College, where kids get playing tips and news from the experts and learn the good things about saving right now. No membership fee, just open a high interest Scotiabank Hockey College savings account. Hockey College, only at Scotiabank. Come to Scotiabank and grow with us. Grow with us, grow with us, grow with us. From the Nassau County Coliseum, game one of this quarterfinal series between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the New York Islanders. I'm Brian McFarlane in the broadcast booth with Bob Cole. And Bob, we can expect anything in this series. And this crowd gave the Islanders a standing ovation as they took the ice here tonight. Isn't it just great, Brian? This is Stanley Cup playoff time again. You can feel it all over the place. And you know, of the four quarterfinal series, I think we've got the most exciting of the four right here. And that old cliche, the first game is the big one. Uh, this is going to be just one heck of a series. Bob, an oddity happened a moment ago. Billy Smith apparently was bowled over while skating around, taking a warm-up skate, and all the teammates gathered around him very anxious because it took him a minute or so to get to his skates. Well, he's okay now, I see. He's the standby goalie, the backup goaltender tonight, as you know. Glenn Resch is starting, but like you say, it was a nervous moment before the game even started. And you're going to have a tough job tonight because we expect a lot of line matchups between these two coaches, Al Arbor and Roger Nielsen. Talked to Arbor this morning and he couldn't promise a thing about lines. Uh, the same thing with Roger Nielsen just before game time tonight. He said, I can't guarantee they're going to stay like this. And you're right, but uh, we'll work it out, I think. 
I'm sure we will, and we're going to have a good time. We're right in the crowd here at the Nassau County Coliseum. It's getting noisier by the minute, and I see the teams are just about ready now for the national anthems. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd please rise and first join us in singing O Canada, and then please remain standing for our national anthem. And now, ladies and gentlemen, there are the officials for tonight's game, Wally Harris, the referee, Gerard Gauthier, and Matt Pavlich, the linesmen in this first game. And for the New York Islanders, starting in the nets tonight, there he is, Glenn Chico Resch. Glenn Resch, number one. Here's Mike Paul Matier getting ready down at the other end, and he's Got the call from Roger Nielsen to start the Toronto Maple Leafs in this quarterfinal series. This is Bob Cole along with Brian McFarlane and a jam-packed house, as you well might imagine, for this first game at the Nassau County Coliseum in Long Island, New York. Sittler against Trotsier. And the game is underway. It's solving the center, flipping it in over the blue line, and Putman back of the net. Puckman into the corner, and that's nice from number 23, jammed in on the boards. The puck rolls loose to the line. Glenny gets a shot away. That hit a skate. And now Trottier around his own goal for Lewis. Lewis trying to bring it out. Got it to the line, and McDonald stopped it. Puckman will start it away again. The Leafs staying in on top of the Islanders in the early going of this first period. Now it's nice from getting away. He's bumped by Glenny. The puck rolled into the corner. Out of the net. It's clear right in front. Trotsche had an empty net. With Paul Matier out of the goal, he just couldn't quite make contact with the shot. McDonald is hit hard by Gillies on the boards. They wrap it up now. Gillies with a nice drop. Nice drop on a bad angle. Took the shot, the rebound. And it's cleared by Glenny, but right on to Gillies. 
He fell down, got it back again. And it's cleared into the corner. Now the Islanders have the Leafs in some trouble. But the Maple Leafs clear it down the ice. It'll be icing. And it comes back to the Toronto zone. And you can hear the crowd really turning it on. I can hardly hear you, Bob. But the Islanders had the first good scoring chance. The Leafs got a little sloppy in their own zone and finally sent the puck down the ice to get it out of trouble. Roger Nielsen, he says the Leafs may be aggressive tonight, and it looks like they're trying to be, but the Islanders are a big, strong team. They line up for the faceoff. There's Ferguson, number 10. And Big Walker is out there rather quickly as they began to throw the weight around inside the Maple Leaf blue line. And now Nielsen wants Walker out there. He is number 26 on the right side with Ferguson. And Maloney, number nine. Wayne Merrick, it rolls by in front of Paul Matier. Johansson on the boards. Walker was stopped. How it could get a stick on it, still fighting for it. Now Walker, a pass to Maloney coming to center ice. Walker is up with him, a long shot, and Glenn Resch caught that and threw it back of the net. Walker went in to take this man up. He goes right on. They become quite physical in the first minute and a half. There's no score. A long shot in the mesh back of the lead goal. And it comes loose, but the whistle is gone. And they'll get a face off in the Maple Leaf zone. We should see a lot of coaching strategy here tonight and throughout this series. There's Al Arbor, who inherited this club back in 73. And uh, he was in the playoffs as a player and coach for 19 straight years until he came to the Islanders. He inherited a rather sad sack outfit with only 12 victories to show for their first year but what a marvelous job he's done with them since they played 145 of the first period and there's no score Johansson number four Merrick after him Johansson can't get away it goes back to Maloney he's around the net and he is having some difficulty moving it Harris was belted by Johansson I'm telling you they're really roughing it up in this first two minutes of action in this first game of the Leafs and the Islanders quarterfinal series comes to center ice. Ferguson ran into Hart. And now Howitt, number eight, on the wing. Look out, Maloney ran into Harris. Back of the net it goes, and Howitt ran into Turnbull. They mean business. It goes to the goal crease. Kept in by Pearson. Pearson jumped it in back of the net. Howitt is after it, ran into his own man. And the Leafs take over. Maloney coming out. A pass to Ferguson up with Walker to center ice. It's Ferguson going in. He's looking good. Back to Walker. In shot. He waited a second too long. And it was deflected up over the glass behind the New York goal. From the Nassau Coliseum, this is Stanley Cup 78. Love songs. A 20-star collection of super mellow music. Paul Anka. I don't like Alone. Diana Ross. You know where you're going to. David Soul. Don't give up on us, baby. Dan Hill. Sometimes when we turn, the honest things to me. Disc 699, tape 799 in the stores now. Love songs. played two minutes and 47 seconds of the first period. No score in the game. And the lead solving with a chance. His high drive up off the glass. The rebound by Weir was wide. Williams into the corner, back to the line, solving again. Tipped in by Weir. And that was very close for the Maple Leafs. Weir tipped it, and it just missed the open side. And now icing called against New York. And we'll keep you abreast of the score at the Detroit and Montreal game tonight, but Weir came very close there a moment ago, just deflecting the puck wide of the target. Canadian flag high over the Nassau County Coliseum. Three minutes and seven seconds gone in the first period. There is no score. Bob Bourne, number 14 at the rim of the circle. Now he's in position and they drop it in and he whipped it in back of the net. 
Lewis jammed on the boards behind the goal, and again, they call the play for a face-off in the New York zone. Tiger Williams, he likes the rough going, and we'll keep you posted on that Montreal-Detroit game with highlights as this evening moves along. Brian, they've really started hitting in this series. Well, there was uh, little doubt that they would. That's the way the Leafs uh, played against Los Angeles, Bob, and it paid off for them because I think they won that series in the very first shift of the series when Settler and company came out and knocked the Kings all over the lot. It'll be a tougher job against the Islanders. Okay, and now McDonald is knocked down. Lewis got a piece of him. Nystrom couldn't control it. At the far side. Number five, Putman, up to Nystrom. It's into Gillies at the line. Gillies has stopped, and Nystrom swinging around at center. He lost it. Now Lewis will bring it in. A long shot by Lewis, kicked away by Paul Matier, and it was called at the line offside. Number 19, Brian Frache, second leading scorer in the NHL this season with 123 points. Just behind Guy Lafleur, and Daryl Sittler was right behind him. What a matchup that is tonight. Sittler against Frache. Who's going to be the all-star center? Bossy has not been on the ice yet. Nystrom has played out on that right side with Frache and Gillies. And as you know, that was one of the more potent lines of the National Hockey League all season. Bossy, the rookie, a sensational year. Passing the 50 goal mark quite comfortably. Long shot, Paul Matier tipped it off. And Putman stopped it at the blue line. Again, Paul Matier has to cover up. Now here's Salming back in the net. Salming's play into the corner. And it's Glenny lugging it out to the line. It's tipped away at center ice by Jones. Lewis for New York. A pass for Bob Bourne, and Salming blocked that and threw it into the New York zone. Lewis is back to the net for it. Lewis waiting, and now starting out, the pass through the middle to Trottier. He can really move it. He passed it ahead a little too far. Bossy on the ice now. He couldn't control it. McDonald's pass stopped by Trottier. He played it back to his own line, and Jerry Hart relay to Marshall. His pass is stopped. Now Trottier in the center, or rather Gillies, into Nystrom. Nystrom getting away. Trottier is on the left wing. Now it's centered to Gillies. The shot was just wide of the far post. Hart took his shot nowhere near the net. Gillies again. He can boom it. And Palmatier stopped with a rebound. Hart kept it in. Here's Nystrom with a chance. He took a shot. And that's off the net. It's cleared off the boards down the ice. Leafs are changing on the goal. The Islanders applying some pressure. Here they come again, led by Trottier, is shot. And that's why to the leaf net. Williams has it. Williams is bumped by Howard. And now Johansson comes up to center ice with Turnbull carrying in. Turnbull cutting for the net. Can he make it? He's back to the goal and bumped on the boards by Jerry Hart. A penalty coming up for the New York Islanders. Jerry Hart as he carried the leaf player into the boards. Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. Ryder rents trucks, all kinds of trucks. And Ryder does everything possible to make sure the wipers work, the headlights work, the brakes and steering and transmissions have been checked out. So practically nothing can stop a Ryder truck. Because when you rent trucks, you don't want them to give you problems. You want them to solve your problems. Ryder, the best truck money can rent. Ian Turnbull with the puck, going in behind the Islander net. Here comes Hart. And Hart puts the grab on Turnbull, takes him into the boards very heavily, gets a holding penalty at 525. The Leafs are two for 10 on the power play in the playoffs. There's Jerry Hart in the penalty box. First penalty of the series. No score. They're nearing the six minute mark of the first period. The Leafs on the power play. Salming couldn't keep it in. Henning comes down with a shot. Put it right on the net, too. And Paul McKeer stopped it. Turnbull took a chance. Stick handling out of his own zone. Sittler with a break on inside the line. Sittler going for the corner, looking back towards Salming. Goes the other way. And hit Turnbull's stick and bounced up on the boards. 
And now into the corner, it's Sittler again, clearing it out to Salming at the line. To Sittler, shot! Just grazed the goal post at the far side. Turnbull kept it in. Here's McDonald to Salming, it's tipped away from the net. McDonald back to the line, Turnbull let it go. And Clay Rich goes down to grab it. It was deflected in front of him, but he saw it and put the glove on it. Leafs showing very well on the power play with that man advantage, taking their time, passing the puck around well. Simpler playing in his 41st career playoff game. Just missed the goal post with a good hard low shot moments ago. Okay, Brian, there's Simpler getting ready for this face-off to the right of Glenn Rash. No score. Six minutes and ten seconds gone in the first period. A minute and 15 left in the penalty. McDonald took the shot, deflected away by Billy Harris, and down the ice it goes as Lewis picked it up. Paul Mateer had to be careful. Now solving number 21. Back of the net, lining up on the power play for the Maple Leafs with 55 seconds left in the penalty. To Hart of New York, Sittler's pass. It's Maloney at the far side. His shot off the board. Sittler is in first, stopped it with a skate. Can he get it loose? McDonald got his pass to Maloney. He winds up, took the shot. Rich stopped it, covering on the angle. And Billy Harris dumped it down the ice. 30 seconds left in the penalty to Jerry Hart of the New York Islanders. No score in this first period. Now they've hit the seven minute mark. And here's Sittler hitting center up the line with McDonald. And his shot drifted wide. Maloney has it now, cleared it off the boards. Into the corner, McDonald back to Salming. He tries to keep it in. At the line, he succeeds. Now Marshall dumped it up to him. Five seconds left for the New York penalty. And it's Harrison with a shot. Oh, that was a close one. It went by Paul Mateer, but missed the post. Now Sittler on a solo dash. And Rush dropped it behind him. And then, oh man, it nearly rolled over the line, but that was a Hard shot by Sittler. It was indeed, and Sittler was getting tired on the play. He wanted a change. Hard to just step back on the ice. Here comes Sittler. Nobody with him. He took one look, decided to shoot, and this very nearly got in the net. Where is it? Rush finally spots it and puts the glove on it. Close call for the Leafs. Well, the teams are at full strength again. The New York penalty served by Jerry Hart. And they've played, there's the time. They've played seven minutes, 32 seconds of the first period, no score. Here's Williams letting it go, and Resch had the angle covered on that one just as well, because Williams got some pretty good wood on that shot, and we've seen goals scored off the faceoff very quickly in an earlier series. Williams is poised again, number 22. Jones is ordered out of the face-off spot, and Jerry Butler goes in against Bourne. The Islanders get the draw, Trotsche coming out. He's down to center ice, it's backhanded in by Bossy. Palmatier had an easy save that time. No score in this first period, Williams coming out. This is Pellick having some difficulty. Pass went by Weir, now Bourne stopped it. Back it comes, right in front of the net to see the score! Mike Kozicki got 13 goals in the regular season, but he found himself alone at the Leaf blue line on this play. The Leafs letting Kozicki have some ice room. Here's the play developing again. Across the ice to Kozicki, 21 going in all alone, and right through Palmatier, one to nothing Islanders. Brian, a great shot by Kozicki. Again at 7.58, Kozicki scores to give the Islanders the one to nothing lead. Mike Kazaki lobbing it ahead. Bourne just let it go by to the center ice area, and Glennie fired it back in. Bossy stopped it. 
The Islanders covering up in the corner was Pearson. He left it. Now it's up to center ice for Merrick. He just lobbed it on the boards and Williams had him covered, but Merrick lifted Williams' stick. Pellick was there for Weir. Weir coming down with Ellis on the right side. He didn't see him, but play it in. Merrick, a pass out to Howitt. Howitt's long shot up high on the glass, and it stopped on the rebound by Paul Matier. One to nothing. New York Islanders leading on the goal by Kaziki during the halfway mark of the first period. And as Potbank kept it in, but it's called on the offside at the Maple Leaf Blue Line. This is Stanley Cup 78 from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. I think I'm going to leave this on. What do you think? Joyce would kill you. Ah! Every year I take it off before we go home. This year... You keep rubbing it, you're going to wear it off. <laughs> Come on, give it time, eh? That's not so bad. No. It's been the same deal for years. Clean up the cottage, share a little Molson export, grow another beer. Guys, just quit hassling me. Hand me a beer, will you? It's in the cabin. Molson Export Ale. It keeps on tasting great. Islanders won, and the Maple Leafs no score. Face off outside the Maple Leaf line. Johansson up to center ice. McDonald didn't get the pass. Gillies was bumped but cleared it over the line. And the Leafs bring it out, led by Williams. Down he goes, across the line. Williams going in! And the low shot was a good two feet off the net. Gillies down to center to Nystrom. Nystrom dropped it over on an open wing as the Islanders change on the goal. And now Jones missing the pass. Caught up to it at the blue line, took a shot. That was blocked. Kept in by Salmi. Back of the net, they try to center it, and Glenn Rush went down to cover up once again. Jones getting a lot of ice time against the Islanders. He really had to be careful watching Trache on one shift, and he stuck to him like glue. Jones averaging a point a game in the playoffs. Glenn Rush has a 2.41 goals against average in Stanley Cup play. Ten minutes and nine seconds remaining in this, the first period, with the New York Islanders leading the Toronto Maple Leafs one to nothing. The goal by Kaziki from Bourne and Bossy at 7.58. Now it's cleared up the line, and here's Turnbull making the shot. He made a play for Ellis from Misko. Now it fired it down the other way, and it's icing against the New York Islanders. The last three years, the Islanders have won 24 and lost 18 of the 42 playoff games in which they were involved. We're watching Wayne Merrick come back, acquired from Cleveland. Bad knees with Cleveland. If he's healthy, he can be very dangerous. First period, Boston leading Chicago 2-1. to one. And we're number 14 into the face-off circle. And it's to the left of Rush. Back it comes to the blue line. Turnbull throws, throws it through the crowd in front of the goal. It didn't reach Rush, though. And the Islanders back again. Flipping it in over the line was Pearson. And again. Paul Matier had to be alert. It hit the side of the net. Johansson trying to go around the goal. Lost it. Paul Matier had to cover up. Well, the Islanders have to be worried about young Mike Paul Matier, 24 years old. Got a lot of work in the regular season. 134, lost 19, and tied 9. Had five regular season shutouts and one in the playoffs, 4 0 over the Kings. Again, the Islanders change as we get the. Matchup for matchup by the two coaches. Bourne is out of the left wing. Kaziki, the goal scorer of this hockey game, and the only one so far at center ice. Bossy, number 22, on the right side. Back of the net goes Turnbull. Kaziki is after him. Ellis gets it away for Weir. Up to center, and the leads change on the go now as they clear it into the New York zone. And here's Jerry Hart coming out. Hart on the left side for Bourne, it went by him. Then Crotchier was bumped by Johansson. Turnbull taking over to Johansson. Up to Sittler, it went by him. 
And again, Pearson of the New York Islanders with Jerry Hart. McDonald nearly stopped it, but failed. Okay, for Gillies. Gillies rolled it over the line, and then Maloney was there to clear it to center ice. Hard again. Fan out at a break for McDonald going in with Jones. Here's McDonald. Oh, the great save by Glenn Rush on McDonald. He had that far corner tape. Back come the Islanders. Gillies for Nystrom. Nystrom cutting in the shot. Oh, that just missed the far corner. Good backhander along the ice. Now it's Lewis. He let it go, and that goes away up high into the crowd. With a score, the New York Islanders won. Toronto Maple Leafs nothing. This is Stanley Cup, 78. Every time you mix a drink, you've got an 80% chance of doing a good job. See this? Four-fifths of your drink is mixer. And no matter what you're mixing it with, that four-fifths is going to make or break the taste of your drink. That's why you should be using Canada Dry mixers for every drink you make. Because it's no secret Canada Dry makes better mixers. So don't take chances with taste. You can't lose when you use Canada Dry mixers anytime, all the time. Eight minutes and 34 seconds remaining. In the first period, one to nothing, New York. And here we go. To the right of Paul Vettier, back to the line. Lewis took a shot. Paul Vettier didn't see it first. It went by the net on the short side. Now Salming back to the goal. Salming decides to go the other way. Zicky watching him. Down across the line for Glenny. A long shot off the boards. And Bob Bourne for New York. Coming out against McDonald, a pass to Potman. Here's Potman coming in with Nystrom. And he was upended by Glenny. There's going to be an interference penalty to Ryan Glenny of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He hit Potman after he had played the puck into his left winger. Ryan Glenny wearing the neck collar gets the first Leaf penalty of the hockey game. So we'll get a look at the power play of the Islanders. Hart went off earlier for holding. That was the only other penalty. We've got 8.04 to play. Watch Glenny's hit right there. That led him to the penalty box. A hit on Potman. No question. Potman had played it off to the side. And Glenny decided to throw the hip into him anyway. And for that, there he is in the penalty box for interference. One to nothing, New York. Now on a power play. Bossy for Putman. Putman along the line for Pearson to Bossy. Oh, what a quick shot. He got away. Make no wonder that young man scored so many times in the regular season, Brian. He got that one away like lightning. Indeed, he did. And the key man for the Islanders, of course, out there is Dennis Putman on the point. Stephen Pearson, a rookie defenseman, picked up a lot of points on the power play as well. But there's Dennis Putman, very, very dangerous performer candidate for the Norris Trophy along with Salming who's out there now. Bache at center. Bossy to his left. To his right is Gillies and now Jones and Bache leave the faceoff circle. Gerard Goche the linesman drops it in finally and it comes back to Putman. Putman over to Pearson. Pearson hit Bossy again and his weak shot was wide. Gillies tipped it in front, but Turnbull would clear it this time. He's coming down with Jerry Butler. Turnbull up over the line, decides to shoot it into the corner. One minute, 30 seconds left in the leaf penalty to Glenny. Long pass for New York, down to the wing goes Bossy. He dumps it in, Trotche after it. He's bumped on the board, so is Gillies, but on stride. Gillies, though, got back on his feet quickly and went after Salming, and Jerry Butler belted Big Gillies again. That's two solid body checks by Jerry Butler on Clark Gillies. Yeah, he picked on the biggest guy around. Gillies about six foot three. Awfully tough to move off the puck. Awfully tough to knock down. That was retaliation for a check seconds earlier in which Butler was up at. So they've been bouncing each other all over the lot here in the early going. 7-16 to play, first period. And it's one to nothing, New York. is dropped in and comes back to Potvin. Here's Bossy on a sharp angle. He doesn't shoot it. Bossy back to the line. Pearson to Potvin. Lost it. And it went over the blue line. Potvin 
looking before he really had the pass. Now he comes through center into Gillies and went by Clark Gillies. Now Jones faked it and went back of the net with it. Jones backhands it toward the line, but not out. Butler couldn't move it. The Islanders keep it in. Puttman will get a shot away this time, I believe. No, he doesn't want to shoot it. Pearson lets it go. That's blocked by Paul Matier. It came loose rather quickly and rolled toward the goal line with the referee, Wally Harris, and called the play dead. Crowd up on its feet screaming now. It saw me gave Paul Matier a helping hand on that play. Referee tonight, Wally Harris. He never gets excited. Here's the replay now. Shot on its way. Paul Matier had trouble spotting this one as it moved in on him. Made the stop. There was a momentary pause, and then the puck squirted loose. But the Islanders right there, Salming helped his netminder cover up. And here's how it looked from behind the net. Right under the leg, the right pad of Palmatier. Now it comes loose, but just for a split second. Salming was a big help on that play. One to nothing, New York Islanders with 33 seconds left in the lead penalty. At the blue line, Pearson kept it in for Nystrom. Nystrom on a bad angle, throws it back to Pearson into Nystrom and hopped over to stick. Kozicki went back of the net, Salming bumped him. Bob Bourne has it under control. Back to Pearson, to Potvin. Potvin right into the goal crease. And Bourne couldn't tip it near the net. Now again, it's Pearson. Penalty is running out. Potvin gets ready. Five seconds left in the penalty, took a shot. That was blocked by Salming, and down the ice it goes. Over the red line, Glennie steps on. Play goes right on, no icing. The penalty is over, though. 5.55 remaining in the first period. Nice from doing it all himself. He's right in on goal, score! Goal by Nystrom. Nystrom splitting the defense. Moving right in on Paul Madeira. And the Leaf defense is off. Very unhappy about that one. Watch again. Here's the move. Bellick tried to take him out. Johansson was there. He missed him with a hip. Paul Matier came out. Missed him as well. He went right by three of them and scored. I'll tell you, that's one of the prettiest goals you'll see in any series. Oh, he had the Leaf Look at defenders tongue tied on that one. And the sign over center ice says, Marvelous, Simply Marvelous. Nystrom scores for the Islanders. A standing ovation for Bob Nystrom. What a piece of work. 2-0 New York. And they're holding it back in the net. It comes loose for Sittler. Rolled it into the crease. Then it went by Maloney. He didn't see it. Maloney after it along the boards against Marshall. This time it comes loose, but the whistle is gone. And they'll get a face off in the New York zone to the right. This is Stanley Cup playoff hockey from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. The challenge of the unknown. Some men go out of their way to find it. But one thing they won't take a chance on is the way they look. So they use Brill Cream. Brill Cream conditions hair, keeps it looking healthy, natural. Keeps you confident you're looking your best. Brill Cream, for men who'll take a chance on just about anything but the way they look. Five minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the first period. The New York Islanders have jumped out front two to nothing. That last scoring play, Nystrom from Putman at 14.09. And you'll see that over again, needless to say. On a replay or two. Great piece of work by Nystrom of the New York Islanders. Now it's Howard coming out. Long pass to center ice. That's knocked down, and McDonald takes over in his own zone for Toronto Maple Leafs. Merrick after it, he centered it, and Paul Matier had to move quickly. It went by his glove and the post. A quick shot, Merrick poking it into the corner. Now Howitt again looks around. Howitt centered it, and Merrick was covered by Maloney and knocked down behind the net. Comes in front where McDonald snipes it. He was belted by Howitt, and McDonald was up in. 
picked him up. Amalone ran into Harris at the far side. Here comes McDonald of the Leafs. A long shot by McDonald is stopped. Resch stopping it with a stick. And now back for New York. This is Trottier. He tried to split the defense, but this time Salming stopped him. Salming took a check on the boards. They jam it. And the play is called again, and the crowd loving it. Well, they came out hitting, but they're hitting even harder now as the Leafs fall behind by two. Spectacular goal by Bob Nystrom, who turned down an invitation to play with the Swedish national team in the Canada Cup. Here's the charge by Paul Matier. After Nystrom left the two defensemen, uh, Johansson and Pellick, reeling at the blue line. 4-20 remaining in the first period. 2-0 the New York Islanders. Gazicki, who opened the scoring of the game, got the draw. But now Salming up to Butler. Butler was bumped by Lewis, and Bourne takes over with Bossy. Here's Bossy shooting quickly. A hard shot was wide of the leaf goal. Kazicki kept it in. Bourne went after it, but Salming takes over. Here he comes up for Stan Weir. Weir through center ice. The lead's changing as the play goes on. And it's Kazicki back of his own net. He was bumped by Boutet. Into the corner, Bossy flicked it the other way around the net, and Bourne shoots it high down the ice. And it's Pellick in his own, rather Glenny in his own zone. Up to Ellis. Ellis got away from Potvin. He'll have to do it again as Potvin caught up to him, but he didn't do it the second time. Back for Kazicki coming in with Bossy. That pass back to Bourne. Bossy got it back to Bourne. And Brian, I think it hit Paul Matier's skate before it went in. Well, we may see that on the replay, but it went in. That's what counts for the Islanders, and it was a clever three-way passing play. Born number 14. They'll take it however it went in. Watch now. Here's Kazicki. He's been a tremendous performer in this first period. I mean, the back pass, and Bossy was there. Born with the puck. Bossy puts his stick out. He gets his first goal of the season against the Leafs. How about that? Bossy got his stick down. It wasn't Paul Matier's skate after all. Bossy got that stick down rather quickly behind the goal game. Yes, he did. What a year for Mike Bossy. 53 goals during the regular season. He failed to score one of them against Toronto, but he comes up with a big one here tonight. So it's 3-0 New York. 16-39, the time of that goal. The third for the Islanders. Harris, a pass ahead at center is Merrick. Merrick up to Howitt. Howitt dropping it back. And Walker tipped it out for Williams. He was belted by Howitt at center ice. Tiger Williams really upended. And the Maple Leafs are called for icing. Bob, let's go down quickly to Dave Hawk. In our first intermission, I'll be talking to Randy Carlisle, the only Maple Leaf who is not dressed for tonight's game. We'll hear pre-playoff thoughts from both coaches, Al Arbor and Roger Nielsen, and Howie Beaker will have highlights. All right, Dave, we'll look forward to that. Eddie Westfall not playing for the Islanders tonight, Bob. He was injured in a workout on Saturday. Uh, damaged knee ligaments. They hope he'll be back for the weekend. Okay, and now the Maple Leafs with a face-off to the left of Paul Matier. There's Merrick going off with Howitt. Kazicki, number 21, getting the draw. Bossy tried to root it loose for a shot, but could Pearson going to the corner in front for Bourne and went by him. Now another quick shot by Hart is blocked. And Ferguson coming down with Walker. Walker tipped it in. Williams is covered, tried to go in after it. Took his man in on the boards, but the Islanders clear it again. Out to center, this is Kazicki. Faked the pass and lost it. It's knocked back in by Bossy. Here's Williams to center ice. The shot tipped away by Rush. Low shot by Williams. Mark Gillies coming right back down for New York. Up over the line with Trotche getting the pass into the corner. Trotche centered it, and Gillies couldn't find it. Now it comes back to Nystrom. He took a shot. That hit Walker, who fell in front of it. Nystrom again, rolled it in front of the net. Palmatier went down and made a good save. 
on the short side. Well, the Islanders are jumping right in on top of Mike Palmatier. They're leading three to nothing. Sittler bounced along one end. Rush stopped that. 150 remaining in the first period. New York. They will not stop. They keep coming. Here's Gillies coming in with Trotsche again. Trotsche back to Gillies. Good play. Gillies back to Trotsche. Ready to go. Oh, it's stopped by Blake Palmatier. Palmy grabbed it. Let's see what happens. The referee Harris is there with his hand in the air, and he says no. Face off to the left. No penalty call. Live from the Nassau Coliseum, the Stanley Cup playoffs. Mercury Marquee is for more than one lifestyle. Marquee's smooth and quiet six-passenger riding comfort, superior riding characteristics, and outstanding road handling ability make it an appealing choice. Marquee is the versatile car for more than one lifestyle. Marquee has Ford of Canada's Duregard system of anti-rust processes, backed by a no-extra-charge 36-month unlimited distance warranty against rust perforation. Mercury Marquee, we're proud about that. At the sign of the cat. We should get a good look at Bossy's goal here. The tip in from Bourne. The pass on its way now. Here comes Bossy. And it's right behind Paul McKeer. Three nothing Islanders. And a minute and a half remaining in the first period. Halleck back of the net for the Maple Leafs. Salming waits for his pass. Will it come? Yes, here it is. And Salming goes to center. Salming backhands it in wide of the net off the boards. Maloney went after it. He was checked. Now he gets it, comes out front, took a shot, and Rush acrobatically stopped that, and it's nice for racing back for New York. Coming in with Gillies and Trotsche, the shot, and it's stopped by Paul Matier. Another shot by Lewis, and Paul Matier had to cover up quickly. Here's McDonald breaking in. He's offside at the center ice red line, and it's all back. Rob Detroit holding their own against Montreal, scoreless after the first period. No goals to report. And when they do score, we'll bring you the goals on our telecast here. 56 seconds to play. It's been the Islanders' period. And Mike Kozicki, Mississauga born, played with the Sioux Juniors, scored 170 points up there in his final year of junior hockey, then played a year at Fort Worth, the spark plug for the Islanders. The New York Islanders jumping out to an early lead in this game. They're leading three to nothing with 45 seconds left in this first period. Johansson took a shot. That's tipped near the net, but Rush covering up neatly on the short side. And all the angles covered. 35 seconds remaining. It's Billy Harris coming in with Howard. A pass to Howard. Weir had him tied up. Howard went after it. Back in front. Play goes right on. Pearson took a shot. That was deflected just wide. Now it is upended back in the net. Herrick is after it. Up to the blue line of Pearson. Pearson for Harris. Back to Pearson. Over to Hart. A penalty coming up to Toronto Maple Leafs. And Williams will clear it. Now the whistle. And here's a tripping penalty coming up against, I think, Johansson on Toronto. Johansson giving the referee Wally Harris quite an argument on that one. Johansson number, number four. four. Johansson. Outstanding rookie defenseman with the Leafs. Their number two draft choice behind John Anderson at the start of the season, or last June rather, in the amateur draft. Goes to the bench with eight seconds to play in the period. Tripping. 1952. Once again, Bob, the Leafs find themselves in trouble. And the Islanders have it all their own way in this first period now. It started as a hitting contest, and believe me, they were hitting. If you've joined us late, in the first five or six minutes, everybody was belting everybody else. And there were no easy body checks, Brian. There were some solid checks. And then finally, Kazicki broke through at 7.58, got a goal. Nystrom got a picture goal, splitting the defense at 14.09. And then Bossy put a stick in behind Paul Mateer and tipped one in. 16.39, three nothing. The New York Islanders, there's Nystrom, number 23. From the draw, it hit a leg and comes to center ice. Four seconds left in the period. It's knocked down by Jerry Butler. 
And there goes the horn to end the first period. Leafs had their chances but could not capitalize. The Islanders got chances and did. And that's the way it stands. And so the score at the end of the first period is the New York Islanders three, Toronto Maple Leafs nothing. Hold it, it's on my foot. Okay, Mark, where did you put it on your foot? <laughs> Marty, I bet you're really handy around the house. <laughs> Will we ever get this thing in? Come on. Okay. Let's get a little muscle into it. Okay, I got it. This is going to give me the strength of three men here. Okay, one, two. Did you bring any beer down? Yeah, I'm going to tell you where it is as soon as we get the raft in the water. Exactly. Come on. One, two, up. Okay, give it a force. Come on, right in the middle. First chance every summer, over, over Marty the and the boys get the old raft back in the water and treat themselves to a little Molson export ale. Marty, uh, we got the beer and uh, you got no paddle. Uh, we're going up to the cottage. Stay with the ship. See you, Marty. Molson export ale. It keeps on tasting great. In 1972, you saw us split a Cartier diamond in a full-size Mercury marquee. Now we're going to risk it in a smaller Mercury Monarch with its own kind of suspension to see if this Monarch's ride is smooth and steady enough. We picked this bumpy road to make it tough. Remember, he must hit it precisely in a pre-cut groove or lose a $50,000 diamond. How did it go? Perfect. Mercury Monarch, we're proud about that. At the sign of the cat. An impressive first period display by the New York Islanders has them in front three to nothing. The first goal by Mike Kozicki at 7.58 from Mike Bossy and Bob Bourne. 14.09 Nystrom from Denny Potvin and at 16.39 Bossy from Bourne and Kozicki. Three to nothing for the New York Islanders. With me Randy Carlisle, Maple Leafs injured defenseman who is not in uniform tonight. And you know the funny thing is I didn't think the Leafs played that badly. It was just uh, that the Islanders played so well. What do you think? Well, I think they got three pretty uh, nice goals. Kaziki's goal was, uh, I think, right up, right in off the post, and uh, and Bossy's goal it was uh, Kaziki made the shot in. I think it was going to go wide, and he comes skating in and just tipped it in the net. So I think uh, two pretty nice goals right there. Were the Leafs hoping that the Islanders might be a little flat? That uh, sounds silly to say now after watching them play in the first period, but. That was a feeling I got uh, from some of the players that maybe we could get the jump on them in the first period. I don't think that they were uh, too, I think they were worried about them being too, uh, too rested. I think they weren't worried about them being flat. Uh, they're gonna come, they knew that they were going to come out and come out flying and they've got an explosive offense now. Very interesting situation. You can remember back or uh, per perhaps you can't, but uh, back to the first game of the season when Brian Trotche was matched against Daryl Sittler all night and Sittler soundly outplayed him. And here tonight, we've got the Islanders trying to get Trache's line against Sittler. Uh, it was a little bit strange when I saw that happen, but it seems as though that the, that's the way the Islanders want to play it. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that? Well, I think that uh, they feel confident in the Trache line that they can outplay um, Sittler and uh, McDonald and Maloney. But I, I don't know. I mean, just one period of hockey here, and uh, I think that uh, over the course of the night, I think we've got a, a pretty good even matchup. So... Uh, I think we got some big things to see from Sittler line to get tonight. They try to keep Mike Bossy away from Tiger Williams. Uh, was Tiger kind of keyed up about uh, going against the rookie? And uh, if so, uh, how effective do you think it is that the Islanders have tried to, to keep him away from it? I don't think they really tried to keep uh, Bossy away from uh, Tiger. They know the way uh, Tiger will play like that against anybody. and doesn't matter who he is. But uh, I think over the course of the season, Bossy didn't score a goal against us. And, uh, that's what Roger did. Uh, he had kept uh, Tiger out against Bossy, so uh, I, think, I guess he thought it would work in the playoffs, and here he scored one tonight. Will Roger change anything with the, the Leafs down three goals after one period? That hasn't happened too often this season. The Leafs have been close, uh, win or lose, in most games they've played. This is a bit of a new situation with them down 3 nothing after 20 minutes. Well, I think they're going to have to open up, and uh, he doesn't really like that uh, open style of hockey, so he's going to have to tell them to open up and see if we can get something going. And, just hope for the best. What's your, your own situation? Can we expect to see you in the playoffs sometime? Well, I hope so. That's totally up to Mr. Nielsen from now on in. So I'm ready now. You're healthy. That's for sure. Okay, Randy, uh, 
Hope you see uh, something you like more than you saw in the first period, and thank you for being with us. The Islanders leading the Leafs 3-0. In a moment, we'll hear from the two coaches, Al Arbor and Roger Nielsen, as Stanley Cup 78 continues in just one moment. The Wagon Master is Mercury. Mid-sized Zephyr Villager has lots of cargo space. Mercury is master of the little Bobcat Villager with its own big cargo area. And master of the full-size Marquee Colony Park, big enough for all kinds of family outings. And all Mercuries have DuraGuard protection. Bobcat Villager, Marquee Colony Park, Zephyr Villager. Join the Mercury Wagon Roundup at your Mercury dealer. I've had this car for about three years and 130,000 miles, and I look after it. Like using STP oil treatment. A lot of drivers I know add STP to their engines. It gives your car that extra care I like having, whether I'm driving 12 hours a day or just around the block. You free? <sighs> yeah, get in. I never get a break, but my car sure does with STP oil treatment. The moods of the coaches would be considerably different now than they were prior to tonight's game, but uh, that's when we talk to them, and uh, let's hear first what Al Arbor had to say to Brian McFarland. Well, Al Arbor, we'd like to hear your views on this important playoff series with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, will it be a long series, a short one? What will determine it? Penalty killing, power plays, line changes, line matchups? Let's hear it. Well, Brian, I don't have a crystal ball to really be able to forecast that, but... You know, the playoffs, uh, it's a different season, and uh, this is why you play 80 games to get into the playoffs, and it should be very interesting. There's so many things that play part of it. Uh, you know, you need real good checking, uh, a good balance of scoring and checking. Uh, your power play is a big factor. Your, your penalty killing is a big factor. Uh, you need a couple of breaks in your favor. All these things uh, are very important in playoff series. How do you look at Roger Nielsen's coaching you? You handle the Leafs reasonably well during the regular season. Is he a pretty canny fellow behind that Leaf bench? Yes, he is. He's a very astute coach, and uh, he's very sharp behind the bench. And, <clears throat> uh, you know, Roger's done a great job with the Maple Leafs this year. Where do you think you have the edge over the Leafs? Well, uh, it's tough to say. They have a fine hockey club. Uh, you know, they've got good goaltending, solid defense, and they've got a lot of guys up front that can, are very explosive and can put the puck in the net. And, you look at the last series against Los Angeles, they got a, a good checking and good balanced scoring, so that is very important in playoffs. And a weakness? Is there a weakness on your club? Well, every club has weaknesses, but I'm not about to say what it is, Brian. Can't you give us a hint? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> what about goaltending? That's often very critical in a playoff series. Uh, that, you say that's pretty even uh, down the line between the two clubs? I would think so. Uh, Paul Mateer has always played exceptionally well against us, and... Uh, uh, Resch has played most of the games against Toronto, but Smitty's played against them also. And, uh, you know, I feel I have two solid goaltenders, and uh, I feel Toronto has the same. So it may boil down to confidence. I know the Leafs have it, and I'm sure the Islanders do. Well, we have it. We're confident, but not overconfident. Thank you, Al Arbor. And let's go back now to Dave Hodge. I'm with Al Arbor's coaching counterpart. I'm with Al Arbor's coaching counterpart in this series, and let's find out Roger Nielsen's thoughts. You played very well against Los Angeles. I'm sure you will want to do the same thing. How, uh, how much can you play the same way? Or uh, to put it the other way, what do you have to change against the Islanders, if anything? Well, I think we've got to be as aggressive as we were uh, against L.A. Uh, it's going to be a lot more difficult because the Islanders are a, a tough physical team, and they always have been. And, however, that's a series that we'd like to make it, and I think our players are up to do that. Roger, uh, Dennis Potvin, Brian Trotche, you can run down the list of Islander stars. Is there any one player that you feel you have to focus on? Well, certainly, uh, Dennis Potvin is a, is a key man. I can remember when he played against Sin Jr., it was the same way. He's quite capable of controlling the game if you let him. Uh, as for uh, other players, their, their big line has to be stopped. And if we uh, want to be successful in this series, we have to contain the Trotche line. You played two close games at the Nassau Coliseum this year, did not win, but uh, came close. Do you have problems playing in this rink, or, or do you feel comfortable here? I think they've only lost maybe three all year here. But it's, it's not a place that you, uh, you fear to go into. Uh, I think the, the Islanders uh, beat you by consistency. They're, they might beat you every time here, 3-2. Uh, and uh, they're, uh, they know how to play this arena, and uh, they get a lot of uh, support from the fans. And uh, it's going to be a tough place to win. Is there any advantage or perhaps disadvantage to the fact that you have been playing during the past week while the Islanders have not? Well, it's probably an advantage. I know our team thinks it's an advantage. 
the Islanders, I'm sure they've had their, their scrimmages and they'll be, uh, be really up and raring to go. But the first period, you, you can be a little stale after a week's layover and we'll, uh, we'll hope for that one. Okay, thank you very much, Roger Nielsen. Brian? Well, thank you, David, and we'll find out in just a few minutes whether Roger and the Leafs open things up a little bit in the next period. They might have had a couple of goals in that first period. They had enough shots at Glenn Rush to score once or twice, but the Islanders lead it three to nothing. We'll hear what Howie Meeker has to say in just a moment or two. We'll return to the Stanley Cup playoffs in just a moment. This man is about to make his morning pot of fresh drip coffee before he goes to bed. He adds his favorite coffee, puts in enough water for two cups to ten, and then sets the built-in timer to start his coffee eight hours later. Night, dear. Night, Ramona. Good morning. The brew starter from Canadian General Electric. A new idea that coffee lovers are waking up to. You're about to be welcomed to one of the best hotels in the world. The hotels with the best locations, near the things you need to be near. The hotels with the best system of standards for taking care of you. The hotels that take care of more travelers than anybody else. Holiday Inn welcomes you to some of the best hotels in the world. Well, Howie, one surprise in the period that Mike Bossy was taken away from Trache and Gillies and yet scored two points. I'm sure the Leafs would have rubbed their hands with glee had they known that the big line would have been broken up by Al Arbor. What wasn't a surprise was all the hitting we saw, especially in the first five minutes. If there's a Richter scale somewhere close by, it has been activated, believe me. Well, Dave, the Toronto Maple Leafs have to play hockey as well as hit. It has to be a controlled hitting game. The Leafs are running all over the rink, taking pot shots at the Islanders and leaving themselves wide open. Uh, certainly the Islanders are, are replying, but there's playing and hitting in their own positions, and there's always someone open to get the puck when, when they pick up a loose puck from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Here we want to show you what we mean about what happens, really, when the bodies start to fly. And this is an excellent example here of good, tough forechecking. You see the Islanders get Johansson off the puck, and Maloney picks it up. Now Maloney knows there's someone chasing him and someone going to be meeting him on the other side of that rink, and he's got his head up looking, and as a result, he loses the puck. You try to make the play or you lose the puck. Now watch the checking in the corner. Johansson comes back in. Maloney's out of position in the, in the far side, but the Leafs play it smart. They work it out this side. But watch the bodily contact, and I would have to say that so far, the Islanders certainly have forechecked a lot better than the Toronto Maple Leafs, and they're consistently hitting. Okay, let's hear, let's go back it up just a bit. All right, now let her go. Here's number nine. Let her go. Here's number nine, the tough guy. Now look at the tough guy with a stick. Ah, jumping. Now here's the talent. Watch the talent check. Here's the fellow that should be handling the puck. Look at that. Now watch the top of your screen again. Watch the top of your screen for the talent on the hockey club. Look at it. There's the captain setting the pace. Now the Leafs, now the defense can stand out because the wings are still in position and there's no way that the Islanders are going to get the puck into the Leaf end as long as the defense stay out and the wings are covered. The defense has been staying out but no one on the wings and that's the result of the one goal. Okay, now watch here. Four Leafs mishandle the puck. The puck hits something on the ice and bounces up. Now watch this pass here. Into the feet and over the stick. Off the stick. Now, no mistake here, a super pass right on the stick, puts Kaziki home free, and he makes no mistake. In all the heavy hitting, the Islanders certainly have been handling the puck better than the Leafs. Mike Bossy, uh, used to playing with Trache and Gillies, uh, he's made quite a line out of Bob Bourne, Kaziki and Bossy. It seems that uh, that rookie can play wherever he's, uh, he's put. Uh, there was talk that Trache and Gillies were partially or perhaps totally responsible for Bossy's success, but you wouldn't know it by looking at the first period. And uh, what do you think about that move, breaking up a line that has been together all season long? Well, I think it's a real good idea. Uh, for years, they condemned Scotty Bowman for doing it, but I would imagine that Arbor's had that line playing together in practice. Hey, Dave, and when you have talent uh, like the Islanders have, you can play with anybody. <laughs> that does even out, doesn't it? <laughs> talent really makes does. a big difference. Thank you, Howie, live from the Nassau Coliseum in Long Island, New York, the Stanley Cup playoffs.
and figure oh. it out. That's all. Al, I mean, will you explain how we all get a chance to win on this Lotto Canada package? Of course I'll explain, Jane. Jim, June 9th, you could win a million. Oh, what Jane, about me, Al? I'm coming to you. You could win up to $5,000 if your number matches one of the Mother's Day draw numbers. Oh. And Ernie, you could win right now. Instant money up to... $500! Let me see that! Put the $500. You get three chances to win with one Lotto Canada package. That's my kind of lottery. You tell him, Al. Make it yours. An old soldier should never rust away. Not when you've got Tremclad rust paint to dress up metal that gets rusty and crusty. So in practically no time, he's bright and shining again. No wonder Tremclad is Canada's number one selling rust paint. flag flying high in the rafters here at the Nassau County Coliseum. I'm with Bob Cole. I'm Brian McFarland and here's Bob Cole with a summary of that first period. Well the goal scoring Brian at 758 Kozicki seemed to be all alone for quite a few seconds took a bead on the net and that was number one at 758 Bossy and Bourne assisting. Then Potfang gave it a nice from near center ice and he made a pretty, pretty play. He went through everybody that was left to go through, including Paul Matier, by going around him and scoring at 14.09. Then Bossy got a stick in behind Paul Matier at 16.39 and tipped one in, and it was 3 nothing. Well, this is only the first game of the quarterfinal series between the Leafs and the Islanders. These same clubs meet here again on Wednesday night. Same time, same station, game two. By the way, Brian, the shots in the first period surprisingly were even, 13 apiece. Well, I mentioned it during the intermission, Bob. I felt that the Leafs, while they were shut out in that first period, did have a couple of excellent scoring chances. I remember one shot by Lanny McDonald. Couldn't have missed more than by an inch or two. And had they scored once or twice, then they'd be really in the thick of it, and they still could bounce back. I don't know what Roger Nielsen's going to do in this period, but I... Imagine he'll have them open up and go for the scoring opportunities. Well, he's got no other choice now. Down three goals and two periods to go. He needs to open up now to get one, and then it can be a new game. And it's always dangerous opening up against a high-scoring outfit like the Islanders. Six 30-goal men's Bossy with 53 regular season goals, and Trotje, the second leading scorer in the league. It's awfully dangerous to open up against a team like that. But man, did they come out hitting in the first period. Oh, pleasure to watch that, wasn't it? Clean hitting, too. Only three penalties, Hart, Glenny, and Johansson. Busy man, Mike Palmatier, over the first 20 minutes. On the scoreboard, Bob, look at this. Detroit and Montreal scoreless in the second period. And Boston leading Chicago 2-1 to one there in the second now. Buffalo and Philadelphia, 1-1 tie in the first period. And they're getting ready to start the second period here in New York. Johansson of the Maple Leafs has a minute and 52 seconds left to serve in his penalty. So the Islanders start the period with a man advantage. And it's Turnbull starting in for Toronto. They have to go on the offensive every chance they get now, down three goals. It's tipped into the New York zone. Jerry Butler watching Rush clear to the corner. Now Potfan is starting away with it. He's at his own blue line. Coming down with Trottier shooting it in. Around the net it comes to Gillies. He tipped it back to the line to Trottier. Over to Pearson. Pearson gets set. Into the rim of the circle for Bossy to Potfan. And Palmatier went down to stop it and scrambled for it. Still a loose puck, and finally, Paul Matier, with the help of Jim Jones and Jerry Butler, gets his hand on it. Paul Matier scrambles to his feet. A lot of hockey sticks flashing in front of him there. 107 left of the penalty to Johansson. And Brian Glenny comes on. Turnbull goes off. That's Glenny 24. Face off in the leave zone to the right. And it's slapped on the boards and cleared all the way down the ice. Back of the net is Dennis Potvin. 
Trache lining up to his left. It comes the other way to Bossy. Bossy at center. Bossy is bumped, but made sure the puck went ahead of him inside the line. And here's a chance for the Islanders to Bossy. His quick shot is blocked by Denny. It went flying into the other corner, and now the play is called. A high stick, apparently, making contact. And now Johansson has 37 seconds left in his penalty. Another good scoring chance by Mike Bossy. Awfully quick when he gets in that slot area as Trache set him up beautifully. Trache, number 19, with Gillies on the right, Bossy on the left. And the Leafs hook a high one down the ice. Resch stopping it. 25 seconds left of the penalty now as Hotback comes out. Islanders on this power play. They're leading three to nothing. And here's Pearson coming in. He flipped it over the line, and it's cleared down the ice by Lenny. Now it's Potfan again. Five seconds left in the penalty. Potfan number five going in. He was up and up the line. Lenny has it. They were offside anyway, and it was called. Potfan's slide finally comes to an end. I asked Harold Ballard before the game, Bob, uh, if he'd give me a free playoff quote, and he answered in three words. Win in four. Bill Torrey, when told of that, said, well, if Ballard's as close with that prediction as he is at the racetracks around here, then I'll be satisfied because he never wins at the track. Boston has jumped in front of Chicago four to one now. They're still in the second period. McNabb has a pair of goals. Islanders three. Maple Leafs nothing. Two seconds left in Johansson's penalty. He'll be on when they drop this one in. There's Sittler. And the faceoff is just outside the Maple Leaf blue line. Merrick had center ice for New York. They didn't do it fairly. They'll drop it again. There it is. And it's Turnbull coming out. Johansson is on and got the pass. He tipped it in over the line, and Hart cleared it up to center ice where Merrick is away. Merrick going in with Harris, digging for the corner. Harris took a shot, and Paul Vettier did not see it. He was out of the net and fanned on it. That was a close call. Marshall for New York, coming out with Harris. And here's Marshall deciding to go himself. He shoots it from center, in back of the net. Paul Vettier stopping it. And he was bumped lightly by Merrick, but the Leagues will clear it. Lanny McDonald with Sittler, coming in with Maloney. Maloney went in after it, but Glenn Resch is out of the net, and he hangs on to it, and Sittler sliding All into it. Ian Turnbull about the key to this series. Uh, I think the key to uh, beating the Islanders is uh, getting the puck out of our end as quick as possible. Uh, a big part of their game is, is coming in and forechecking, and I think if, if our defense can move the puck out of our zone as quickly as possible, I think we'll, we'll have the edge. And now Turnbull with a shot, and that was blocked in front by Hart. Howitt gets it up to Mary, coming in with Harris, and here's Howitt breaking for the net, right in on goal. And he failed to hit it. And now back to the line where Marshall's screen shot was wide. He tried to set up Howitt. Howitt dumped it in front. Paul Mateer couldn't grab it. Hart went after it on the boards. Jerry Hart stopped. He was knocked down by Sittler. The Islanders, Merrick, holding it with a skates. Johansson had him covered, and they get a whistle. From the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island, this is Stanley Cup 78. What would it take to get you to switch to a new beer? Like this one, Molson Diamond. Well, how, how about, about if I, I told you that it's smooth? With a fresh taste. Kind of like a good draft. Convinced? Of course not. You gotta judge for yourself, right? Well, I did. And I like it. Maybe you will, too. So why not give Diamond a try? And compare it with what you're drinking now. You just might find yourself changing beers. Three minutes and three seconds gone in the second period. Islanders three, Maple Leafs nothing. The teams are at full strength. Rash out of the net to stop this one for Marshall. Here's Marshall getting away from Williams. Coming out is Bossy at center ice, and Bossy shoots it in wide of the net. Born. He was covered and couldn't make a play. Pellick was bumped off the puck. It's 
back in front and cleared by Stan Weir. But the Islanders getting back quickly send the Leafs back into their own zone. Solving a long pass for Weir didn't work. Marshall up on the wing for Bourne, but offside was Kazicki on the right wing. first period he set up Kozicki's first goal and then he set up one by Bossy the third goal as we look once again at Tiger Williams has 132 penalty minutes in playoff action Williams is on with Weir and Ellis Pelican the defense with Salming the lead down three goals have to get it going if they hope to do anything with this first game in this quarterfinal series Lewis, a long shot on the boards, and Williams has it. Williams around the net was upended. There's going to be a penalty to the New York Islanders on that play. There it is. A tripping penalty to Bossy. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. Disco Fever, 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 Fever featuring Fever, Miko Fever, and Star Wars. Tavares. Must be missing an angel. Donna Summer. In the stores now. Two record sets, $6.99. Tape for cassette, $7.99. Keep your Saturday Night Fever alive all week long with Disco Fever. Fever, 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 Fever. fever. Bossy took only six penalty minutes all season long. Here he is tripping Tiger Williams, a pair of 22s on the play. Bossy 22, Williams 22. Bossy's now in the box at 359. And now the Leafs with a man advantage. Turnbull, back of the net. Now he'll start it. Coming out against Harris. Nearly was stopped by Billy Harris. He was. Harris got it in front on the pass. Now Turnbull. Trying to make up for that error. Comes back down across the line. Trying to go all the way. Lewis caught him on the boards. He carries on, though. Turnbull around the net. Gets it back into the corner for Maloney. He moves slowly. And Potvin knocked it out to center ice. Salming stopped it there. 125 left in the New York penalty. Maloney coming in with Sittler on his right. A back pass. McDonald has it slapped at it. And the high shot nowhere near the net. Turnbull kept it in for Sittler. Sittler back in the net for Maloney. Maloney from the corner looks out to Salming. There's the shot and Rash stopped it. But Sittler looking for a rebound. But it didn't come. You look at Bossy taking that penalty. Everybody expects he'll win the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year. He's also a candidate for the Lady Bing if he only has six minutes in penalties. Glenn Resch stopping that drive as Sittler was right there. Salming shot. Here's the replay now. Watch Sittler move in from the angle, but there's no rebound for him. Okay, Resch making the stop and getting a whistle for a faceoff in the New York zone. 104 left in Bossy's penalty. Nearing the five minute mark of the second period, 3 0 New York. Here's Turnbull's chance. The shot is blocked by Putman and cleared by Henning. Salming, number 21, pass knocked down in center. Crowd calling for a penalty as Trache was pulled to the ice. Up, there is no penalty. The play goes straight on, and they're offside at the New York blue line. And you'll hear the cat calls now from the crowd as they get on referee Wally Harris. Lanny McDonald, 47 goals in the regular season to lead the Toronto Maple Leafs, wearing that nose protector. He broke his nose few days ago and you can see the six stitch cut also on the nose. Now Williams tries to get loose gets it back to Turnbull. Thirty five seconds left in the New York penalty Turnbull stick handling in. Cleared it into the corner back of the net Lewis after it up on the boards goes Henning and he was stopped. And roughing it up again in the wrong zone these New York Islanders and Potvin scoops it down the ice. With 18 seconds left in the New York penalty. Here's Williams. A long rink wide pass to Sittler going in. When McDonald Sittler took the shot. McDonald gets it and he's tied up by Henning. Five seconds left in the penalty. Turnbull has time to get one away. There it is. 
And it was tipped up on the glass. And the Islanders are at full strength again. Bossy, one man back. He's going in with Trotche, catching up. Bossy, right in front. He tried to set up Trotche, but Paul Matier made a good grab on the pass by Bossy. Bob, let's go now to the Montreal Forum and find out what's happening. Every moment they are on the ice. Now, the point starting out. Jarvis has it on the right side. He's cutting straight inside. He scores! I think Dougie Jarvis was standing in back of the red line when he reached around and knocked that puck out of the air into the net. I'm sure it was Jarvis who put it in. The Canadians break the scoring famine and take a 1-0 lead. Live again from Long Island, the Maple Leafs. Coming out of their own zone, having some difficulty to get it up to center ice. It's 3-0 here. As it's cleared in by Marshall. Gillies going after it. Butler checked him on the boards. And Trotche is belted by Jones. And they pile in on the boards. It wouldn't take much time to get it going. The way they've been throwing the weight around in this hockey game. You know, and Jones has been keeping close track of Trotche all evening. Now they're right in front of the Islander bench. This is Stanley Cup 78 from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. We know that banker's hours may not be your hours. And when you want to see somebody about a loan, that can be a problem. So phone Scotiabank. A Scotia Plan loan officer will arrange a time when you can get together. Outside normal banking hours if necessary. When everything else seems cold and empty, we'll keep a light in the window for you at Scotiabank. Just off shift. Thanks for sticking around. Well, so come to Scotiabank. Thank you. Throw with us. 13 minutes, 21 seconds remaining. In the second period, New York 3, Toronto no score. The teams are at full strength. Matt Price up on the wing. Nystrom couldn't move it. Nystrom bumped Lenny. And now Ferguson in for Toronto. He has Walker with him. And he's taken in on the boards by Gillies. Back for New York. It's Gillies at center. Into Nystrom. Nystrom overskates the puck and Williams pass went astray at center. Gillies went after it. Dumped it right to Lenny. And Lenny handed it right back to the Islanders. This is Price shooting it from center. He upended, was upended by Lenny going by. The Islanders fight for it on the boards. And the Leafs get it to the line. Price couldn't stop Ferguson. Ferguson's pass went by Walker. And now Marshall in his own zone. Up for Drouin. Drouin stopped at center ice. He couldn't move very far. And Walker tipped it back to Lenny. Lenny gets away from Nystrom. Comes back to center ice. And the Leafs having quite a bit of difficulty getting some attack organized. 12 minutes, 10 seconds remaining in the second period. And it's New York leading 3 to nothing. Again, they jam in on the boards. The puck came loose, but the whistle had gone. Bobby Nystrom played in every Islanders playoff game and scored a picture goal in the first period tonight to put the Islanders in front two to nothing. Jude Drouin getting some ice time now with the injury to Eddie Westfall. He'll see some action in the first couple of games and he's the all time leading scorer for the Islanders in the playoffs with 44 points. Twelve minutes and four seconds remaining in the second period. New York Islanders three. Toronto Maple Leafs no score. Face off coming up to the left of Glenn Rush. And the New York goal. Weir with Maloney and Ellis. And the Leafs have Johansson and Turnbull on the defense. Gresh calling some time to adjust his equipment. Now we're ready. And from the draw, it comes loose. Still in that big circle, poked back to the line. Johansson trying to set up Turnbull and failed. And now Pearson's pass for Bourne. Here's Bourne dropping it back to Trache. Trache gets in front. Couldn't make a play. Still has it though. Trache fan on the shot. Got it back to the line. It's kept in by Hart. And then the Leafs Weir back to center. 
A high shot off the glass. The Islanders again fail to bring it out. Here's Turnbull to Weir. Chance for Weir going in. And he tried to set up the pass for Maloney, and it was blocked. 11-20 remaining in the second period. Weir dumping it across the line. Croce tries to get loose. Maloney stopped him with a hip check. And Maloney in the center ice area, spinning around with it. Shoots it on the boards, and it goes in back of the New York goal. Gary Hart, a long pass to center, nearly hit Kaziki. Johansson behind the net. Out for Maloney, coming down on the left wing, Maloney. He tipped it into the New York zone, and Resch just covering up for Jerry Hart. Hart's pass. That was stopped. Kaziki chopped at it. Finally, they get it across the line. Harris is stopped by Maloney, who got it back to Turnbull. Nearing the halfway mark of the second period, New York three, Toronto Maple Leafs no score. Sittler trying to break through. Sittler is stopped just inside the line by Jerry Hart. Turnbull waits for Maloney to come out. Shooting it in. Resch out of the net, stopped it back of the goal, and it's Hart swinging away with it to Harris. Harris was hit by Williams, and the Leafs throw it back in. This will be icing likely. It is, and it's called back into the Leafs zone. With a score, the New York Islanders three, Toronto Maple Leafs nothing. This is Stanley Cup 78. If you're a one brand beer drinker like myself, nobody's gonna talk you into switching over to Molson Diamond just because a lot of the other guys are doing it. Not even when they tell you it's got a smoother taste than your brand. There's only one thing that's gonna make you change your mind and you know it. You gotta judge Diamond for yourself. Like I did. So go ahead, you be the judge. After all, the other guys can't always be wrong. Bill, the catch is in Ten minutes, nine seconds remaining in the second period. They saw off to the left of Paul Matier. And here we go. Nope, they're out of position. Williams is, what, eight, nine feet inside the... Just an inch or two, really. Inside the line. Yeah, he was well in there. That's what he'd find. Back it comes, and it went by Pontban down the ice. Hotman at his own line. Gillies to center. Up to Nystrom. He was stopped by Pellick. Now Gillies gets loose. Gillies going in. A weak shot. It bounced near the net. Paul Vatier juggled it away from the crease. Williams at the blue line is Hotman doesn't see it. But Williams does, and he's away with Sittler. Williams in with a shot. That's picked up by Rash. Williams has the rebound, centered it. And McDonald failed to trap it in time. And Rash. Very alertly, jumped down on it. Good play by Williams. Let's go back now while we have a pause in the action of the Montreal Forum, and Montreal Canadiens are taking hold against Detroit. It in by Ray Jean Oul. Canadians definitely establishing that pattern of staying up there on top of them, right in front of the oh! Well, I don't know whether that one in one was deflected or not. I think it just took a bad hop in there. Reggie Hall was right in front. New York three and the Maple Leafs no score and the Islanders are changing now for this face off to the right of their goaltender Glenn Rash Bourne number 14 on the left side it comes back quickly a shot and Rash had to move fast to stop that one from Boutet he let it go right off the draw Croce from the corner out by Pellick, but Pellick ran into his man, Bossy. Threw it back to the net the other way. Comes out to Bossy again. Bossy stopped by Boutet, but he got the puck down to center ice. Now it's Pearson coming in. Pearson moving well. Pearson still has it. Over to Bourne. And Bourne from the corner. Bossy, who was always in front of that net, just missed getting a second goal of the night. Raised the post for the backhander. There's Bossy coming into the side of the goal. Bossy again, back of the net. Bourne went after it. And Pelican Butler run into him. He tried to get it loose, and he did. Got it back near the line. Jones has stopped. The Leafs can't move it out. 
Now Pelling back of the net. 8.35 remaining of the second period. 3-0 New York. Boutet down to Jones. Jones, the handles up over the line and will be offside. Butler was knocked down and there's going to be a penalty to the New York Islanders. Jerry Hart is going off. So it'll be tripping against Jerry Hart of the New York Islanders. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. If you want something special for the sounds of your life, a realistic sound that's right for you, there's just one name that can be loud and clear. That one name just keeps on coming through. Radio Shack, ooh, that's what you want to hear. Radio Shack, ooh, that's what you want to hear. Radio Shack. Well, Jimmy Jones was trying to find a route to the Islander goal. Jerry Butler was taken out by Hart at the blue line and was sent sprawling over the line. That forced the offside. The time of the penalty to Hart, 11.31. There he is in the box. So we're ready to go outside the line. They drop it in. The Leafs now with a man advantage. Long shot. That's grabbed by Paul Matier. Harris going in to watch Salming. Salming back to the net, starting out with it. Salming comes up slowly, gives it to Sittler down across center. A weak shot from center right. Rush stopped that. Henning gets a chance to move it out, and he makes no mistake and rolled it down the ice. Salming number 21 with a minute and a half left. And the New York penalty. The Leafs having some trouble getting it organized. Now Salming's pass on the left side. Maloney couldn't stop it. But man made a good move and cleared it up to Harris. Harris took a shot. And he raised the goal post with that low shot. He fooled Paul Matier completely. The Leafs McDonald out across his own line at center. McDonald up near the line across it. Along the boards back to Salming. Salming into McDonald. McDonald looking around. The box is set up by New York and Salming can't shoot it. Now he gives it to McDonald. He faked the shot, comes in close, rolled it in front. And they're tied up now, another shot. They score! Sittler finally wrapped it all. McDonald had the chance, but then Sittler did it. And finally, the Leafs hit the score sheet as silence prevails in the Nassau Coliseum. Power play effort by Darrell Sittler as the Islanders tried to play that tight box, but the Leafs were able to penetrate. There's McDonald faking the shot. Now he moves around, tries to pass it. It's off a skate. McDonald will circle the net and get the puck right back here in a moment as the rebound comes off the skate of Rush. You'd think McDonald scored there, but he didn't. It took Sittler from the other side to pop it up and in. So it's 3-1. to one. The Leafs get on the score sheet with the power play. 12 minutes and 48 seconds. The goal time by Darrell Sittler. He was right on the spot. You'll see it again. Okay, now watch Rash. You'll have to move here. Go to his right as McDonald circles the net. There's the rebound. Off his stick, it squirted loose to Sittler. Rash had no chance to get back on it. So that makes it three to one. The Islanders lead cut by a one. And Bourne for New York. Pearson gets it from Hart. Back to Hart. Jerry Hart up to center ice. Shoots it in wide of the net. All the tears stopped it. And Lenny cleared it on the boards for Ellis coming out. Ellis pass to Williams. Williams looking for Ellis again. He decides to shoot it in. Rush stopped it behind the net. We're coming in. So is Ellis. And Rush covered up. Didn't see it. The Leafs come off. Lee close again. And now it's Kazicki coming back for New York. Kazicki made a good move. Run away from Lenny. Then he was belted by Pellick, and Lenny shoots it out to center. It bounced by Pearson and into the New York zone. Over for Hart in front of the net. Bossy coming out with Bourne. Bourne down the left wing. Has a lot of room with Mary. And Pellick broke it up neatly. Pellick for Stan Weir. He stopped. Lewis back for Pearson. Back to Lewis again. 
Up across center is Howard. He's going in with Merrick. Back to Howard. He got in front of the net, and he was knocked down. Merrick gets it back to Lewis. His shot hit Weir. Lewis again. Into the side of the net. They score! Merrick. Poked it by Paul Nagier. And it's four to one. Just when it looked like the Leafs were going to come back against the Islanders, and they may yet, the Islanders score again on Paul Nagier to make it four to one. They did a good job holding the puck in here. The Leafs might have been able to get it out, but failed to do so. Then Merrick, the former Cleveland Baron, tucks one into the corner. There's a replay. Merrick gets credit. Fourteen oh six, the time of the goal. Dave Lewis did a good job to keep that puck in the leaf zone. Merrick finished off the play, scored only ten times during the regular season. Gets a big one for the Islanders now in the second period. Howard also got an assist. Bob. It's four to one now with 5:50 remaining in the second period, and the Islanders cross the line. They're offside. Well, let's find out again what's happening at the Montreal Forum as apparently the Red Wings are fighting back against the Montreal Canadiens. Here we go to the Forum. The rise, Brown. Bergman feeding it back in, and Detroit would like to go to that forward second pattern that the Canadians successfully used. It's to the way to go. They score! Well, that makes it 2-1. to one. So after a scoreless first period, they come in bunches right here. Fill the head. Well, when you've got a hot hand, it's... Bill Lahead having a great playoff series. Scores for the Red Wings. And here, Merrick has just given the Islanders that three-goal lead. They enjoy it for quite some time. After Sittler had broken the ice for the Lynx, Merrick poked it by Paul Matier. Lenny, or rather Pellick, was right there and couldn't stop it. Jerry Hart. Up on the boards for Pearson, up to center. Howard into Harris. Howard is stopped. So is Harris. And back to the net. Boutet ran into his man and knocked him down. They fall on the puck, and there's no further play. The hitting hasn't been quite as consistent in this uh, second period as it was in the first. It was a question, anyway, of how long they could keep that hard hitting up. And the Leafs uh, got that power play score by Sittler, and then the... Islanders fought right back seconds later to score with Merrick finishing off a play after Lewis did a great job to hold it in the zone. The Islanders won six of their nine playoff series. And the Islanders are changing again. Jude Drouin at center ice, number 17 with Harris and Howitt. Hart and Pearson, the two New York defensemen. McDonald reached for it, poked it to center ice, but then he was tied up by Hart and couldn't chase it. Pearson's pass to Drouin. Up to Harris, that didn't work. Broken up by Valaket. And Ferguson was stopped. Drouin swinging back out for New York. Ferguson got his pass and poked it to center to McDonald. McDonald is going in, faked the shot, then fanned on it. And then he was charged into the boards by Hart. Ferguson ran into Harris on this side. Howard coming in. He couldn't set up. Drouin. And the Leafs come right back. It's Ferguson dropping it back to McDonald. And a hard shot is blocked by Resch. McDonald really walked into it. Valaket into the corner. Gets it back to Ferguson. He let it go. And Resch got that. McDonald back in the net trying to center it. Valaket hooked it in front. Here's Johansson letting it go. And it was deflected up high over the net. Turnbull giving it in. The Leafs have it inside the line now and have the pressure. But finally, it's clear down the ice. Harris playing without a stick. Here's Ferguson charging back in for Toronto. Ferguson's pass in front. Oh! And Ellis tipped it a little too high and missed the top corner. And a runaway sticks go high. Ellis came.
sweeping by the goaltender Rush. Good pass to Ellis, number six. We'll uh, see Skirt. more of him during the intermission as they continue to bump and bruise each Ellis, other in against the glass. The One of the Islanders players got his stick caught under the end boards right behind the net. He struggled to get it loose for a moment or two and then said, what the heck, I'm going to leave it here. Played without a stick for several seconds. Back the stick, I believe, is still down there at the player's feet. You can see it there just behind the net now. See how easily it comes loose. Well, it takes a while. Let's go downstairs quickly to Dave Hodge. And you were speaking of the intermission. Ron Ellis will be featured on film in our second intermission. Ryan will be talking with Ed Westfall, the injured Islander, and Howie Meeker will have highlights of the second period. I'm looking forward to talking to Ed Westfall. Uh, he's a he's a great fellow and certainly has a rare insight into hockey. And we'll probably get around to talking about penalty killing somewhere along the way. He excels at it. One of the best of the game. Bob, here's how that st started. Ronnie Ellis just missed a scoring opportunity there and uh, collided with the Islander player coming around behind the net. The sticks went up and. First thing you know, Maloney was there. Everybody was into it. So the New York Islanders have opened up that three-goal lead again on Merrick's goal here in the second period. Sidler had scored for the Leafs earlier. Four to one with 3.47 remaining in the second period. On the faceoff, it goes in back of the New York goal. Hot fan up along the blue line to Merrick. He took a long shot that hit Glenny. Salming covered up and got away from Gilly. Then Salming was belted by Croce. Now it's a long pass to Maloney. That didn't work. Lewis fired it back in for New York. Now Glenny back of his own net. Stick handles up front. Got away from Croce. Down the ice it goes. And it's Dennis Pontfan back of the net. Pontfan looking around as the auditors come back to line up. Now the pass to Gillies on the left wing coming down with Nystrom. A long shot in off the boards in the corner. Back of the net, cleared back to Pontfan. Took a shot, screech. It was deflected just wide. And Ellis around his own net. Out for Toronto. Ron Ellis, the pass to Sittler. At center ice, Sittler was turned around at center. Then the puck was chopped over the boards at the far side, and it's into the crowd. Live from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island, the Stanley Cup playoff. Midnight is mystery. Midnight is excitement. Now midnight is Cougar, the Midnight Cat. In Midnight Blue and Shabby, a bold new Mercury Cougar XR7 for 78 with deeply cushioned buckets, floor shift, console, and a padded tire deck. A new Cougar XR7. Isn't this your year to join the cat set? At the sign of the cat. And the face-off coming up just inside the New York line. 2.41 remaining in the second period. Islanders in control again. Bourne got it back to Marshall. And Marshall comes out to this side with Pat Price. Price on the boards for Kazicki. Kazicki across center. He's stopped by Jones. And then Johansson. A pass to center to McDonald. In with Boutet. Boutet and Jones come in. Jones has stopped. Went over after it along the boards. He and Bourne. And they hold it with their skates. And there's no further play. Four to one, Islanders over the Leafs, not the forum. It's Detroit against the Canadians. Canadians doing well. Let's hear what's happening. The bird, Robinson, up for Cornwallie with Ray Zanu, trailing his mom Dew. Ool has it back to Cornwallie, going, he, he scores! Well, Red Lowe has played very well. I don't know if he was really... Now again from Long Island in New York. The Islanders shoot it in and Bourne going after it back of the net into the corner he goes. Bourne still has it. A pass in front. And Bossy was too well covered and couldn't get a shot on the net. Here's Boutet swinging out for Toronto. Dropped it back. Johansson across the line. He's up across center. Hammered one on the boards. It goes the other way. 
Mizicki went over after it and comes up with it. And he was bumped by Boutet, but it came loose for Marshall. Marshall's pass for Bossy. Jahawit on the wing is Kaziki. Put himself offside, actually, and it's called back. Well, if you watch Bossy play hockey out there, and it's easy to see why he scores so often. When his teammates have the puck, he, he has great anticipation. He seems to head for a spot on the ice, and invariably the puck comes awfully close to him, or else it's right on his stick. And as a result, he gets lots of scoring opportunities. It's happened about three times already in this hockey game, and he has one goal. And he gets that shot away so quickly. He doesn't take too much time at all. Zip, and it's gone. It's the way the rocket used to do it. Well, it's four to one with a minute and 23 seconds remaining in the second period. The Islanders on top of the Toronto Maple Leafs in this first game of the best of seven quarter final. The second game here Wednesday night. Here's Harris after it. Horn keeping it in, but not for long as Weir. Backhands a pass to center, stopped by Pearson. Pearson grips one on the boards, and Bourne tried to catch up to it. A minute left in the second period now, and the Leafs shoot it to center. Islanders pound it back in, and it's Salming and Pellick getting together. Pellick, a long pass to Salming across the line with Maloney. Maloney is stopped by Pearson. They go to the ice, and the Islanders, Harris, on an open wing for Hart. Hart took it on a bounce on the board and gave it to Merrick. Merrick slapped it high on the glass to the left of Paul Mateer. 30 seconds remaining in the period. 4-1 New York Islanders. And the Leafs come back. Turnbull across the line, shooting it back of the goal. Turnbull after it. Turnbull still has a chance, but now Hart covers up. And they likely get a whistle. There it is for a face-off in the New York zone to the right of Rush with just 15 seconds remaining in the period. Bob, let's go back to the forum and find out what's happening. Montreal scores again. Here's Lafleur. He has set with him back to start shooting it. And it's blocked by a defensive end. But he scores! Okay. It's wide open there, too. 4-1 here at Long Island, New York, where the Islanders are up three goals on the Maple Leafs and 15 seconds remaining in the period with this face-off now to the right of Glenn Resch. They're a little anxious before the puck is dropped. Now it's in, and the Leafs get a shot away. Salming's drive was deflected wide. McDonald took a shot. They'd love to score now the dying seconds of this period. Sittler tried to center it. Three seconds left. The Islanders in control as the horn goes to end the second period with each team getting a goal. Sittler for the Leafs and Merrick for New York. And so the score at the end of the second period is the New York Islanders four, Toronto Maple Leafs one. The Magic Organ, a special album of 25 all-time favorites. This 25 all-time favorites album is in the stores now. Album 699, tape 799. The Magic Organ. How long do you want your car to last? Forever. Now don't laugh. She's already gone over 90,000 miles and without a major engine repair. I try to take good care of her. I give her regular checkups and the only motor oil I ever use is Quaker State. Quaker State can't promise everyone mileage like Mr. Miles gets, but Quaker State helps cars last. And that's a fact. I guess that's why Quaker State's the best-selling motor oil in North America. Here they come, the popular Ford Explorers. There's no better time to buy than now during the 11th annual Ford Explorers Celebration. Special edition Ford pickups that come with special paint, mag-style wheel covers, and special cab trim. The value adds up as you add on. Pick options like power steering, cruise matic You get great value on these tough Ford Explorers. Get down to your Ford or Mercury dealer now before they're all gone. 
Maple Leafs outshot the Islanders 9-7, but the Islanders hold their three-goal lead, which was built in the first period. Daryl Sittler put the Maple Leafs on the scoreboard with a power play goal, but less than two minutes later, Wayne Merrick came back to restore that three-goal margin for the Islanders. Now we have a film visit to King Township, and we meet with Ron Ellis, the only Maple Leaf ever to play on a Stanley Cup winner. We moved up here two years ago uh, when I retired from the game, mainly, because I work with a golf club here in King Township. Hello, gang. How are you? Uh, we thoroughly enjoy it up here. Uh, the kids have a lot of friends here, and uh, my wife, Jan, spends a great deal of time at the club. She's over there playing tennis in the summer, and uh, she does a lot of cross-country skiing in the wintertime. So we're having a lot of fun up here in King. Visiting with the Ellis family, the first thing we wanted to know was why did Ron retire for two years in the prime of his career? Well, I think the main thing for me, and I, I really feel a lot of professionals probably go through the same thing, I've been involved in <coughs> hockey since I was 10 years old. I was owned by the Maple Leafs since the age of 15. And uh, it's always been my life. And I always wondered, well, is there anything else Ron Ellis can do besides play <coughs> hockey? There's going to come a time when you're going to have to leave this game and go out and make your mark in the world in some other profession. So really, in those two years, I was able to prove to myself that uh, you can do more than play hockey. And um, so now let's go back, enjoy the game, and play as long as you feel you want to. And when you decide to pack it up once and for all, then you know you're going to be able to go out there and do a good job for your family. And so that was uh, very important for me. I was glad to see Ronnie retire because the pressures of hockey were really getting to him. So I uh, was glad to see him quit and, and thinking we could have a normal life and maybe see a little more of him. Uh, when he decided to go back, if he had said it maybe a year ago, I would have been more upset. But after seeing him play so well in Vienna and see him enjoy it again and he promised me that it uh, wouldn't get to him like it did before that he could handle it and i haven't uh, minded as much as i thought i would when he decided to go back one person who certainly didn't mind seeing ron come back was the leafs freshman coach roger nielsen one of the biggest reasons for our team's success this season has been uh, the return of ronnie ellison we were kind of hoping that maybe he'd be able to do his job defensively and perhaps get 15 goals but uh, he's almost doubled that output, and uh, he's just been outstanding as a two-way player for us this year. Ron contributed 26 goals and was used to cover some of the opposition's finest left-wingers. But who does Ron rate as the toughest left-winger to check in the game today? Steve Shutt right now would probably one one of them because he's so quick, and I, I, you just can't give him much room. And certainly he's, he's proved he's a great left-winger with the goal scoring he's been able to do in the last couple of years. Thinking. Okay, not this time. You're joking! Besides being a strong team man, it's obvious Ron Ellis is a real family man. He enjoys his time with his children, daughter Kitty, who's seven, and son RJ, almost four. RJ stands for Ronald John. And another rather large member of the Ellis family is Tammy. The old house is still standing though the paint is cracked and dry this was rompin ronnie ellis during his early years with the leafs he doesn't play guitar and sing much anymore and he doesn't wear number eight like he did back when the leafs won the stanley cup in 67. ron scored this goal in the final game and we wondered about the difference between that championship club and the current edition of the toronto maple leafs in 1967, we had a very mature club, a club that had a lot of veterans on it. At that time, I believe I, I was the youngest player on the team. And when I look at this team that I'm on right now, all of a sudden the roles are switched a little bit. I'm all, all of a sudden the veteran on the team, and we have a very young club. But I really feel that we do have a lot of talent this year, and uh, some of the players have really come into their own. And when I say that, I mean players like Daryl. Daryl and McDonald and Salmon, they've just developed just fantastically in the last three or four years, and they're playing fantastic hockey for the Maple Leafs, and if we don't do it this year, we will do it in the very near future. 
Ronnie Ellis at 33, the oldest member of the Leafs, who has made a successful comeback this season and earned the Toronto Maple Leaf nomination for the Masterton Trophy. Since his comeback, Ron Ellis has joined the 300 goal club in the National Hockey League. He would like to get one tonight, I'm sure, the Leafs down by three against the New York Islanders. Coming up next, a happy member of those Islanders, though not happy about being where he is now. Eddie Westfall will be with Brian McFarlane. Stanley Cup 78 continues in just a moment. Ford of Canada's commitment to you. Every Ford and Lincoln Mercury car sold in Canada has a special warranty. A no extra charge 36 month unlimited distance warranty against rust perforation. This warranty backs up Ford of Canada's DuraGuard system of seven anti-rust processes built in at the factory and standard on 1978 North American built Ford and Lincoln Mercury cars sold in Canada. Ford is committed to quality, reliability and durability and to you. Everbrood has all kinds of power to get you where you're going in a hurry. Whether you're in a hurry to catch your supper, or even in a hurry to catch something else, Evanrood gives you 17 ways to go from 2 to 235 horses. Because some things in life are worth hurrying for, Evanrood gives you all kinds of power. I'm a music lover, but I'm no engineer. Right, Stanley? Uh-huh. The well, last time I went shopping for stereo, I was so busy checking out the specifications that I didn't have time to listen to the music. So today, I brought Stanley along. He's an audiophile. Right, Stanley? Uh-huh. He checked out the specs while I concentrated on the music. And we both agreed on Sansui. Beautiful engineering, beautiful music. Sansui. There's even music in the name. Right, Stanley? Stanley? The John Deere 400 tractor, a powerhouse of versatility. Rotary mower, hydraulic controls at your fingertips. You control the cut. Rotary tiller, rear PTO supplies the drive, digs deep and wide. Front end loader, power steering lets you handle up to 600 pounds capacity with ease. And moving parts are enclosed for safety and quiet. With a full range of tractors and attachments, including snow thrower, there's no job too tough. Proof, nothing runs like a deer. This guy has a million fans in hockey. They seem to be all here tonight. Listen to them up here. Eddie Westfall. What do you think of that, Eddie? That's quite a tribute to you. Well, it certainly is, Brian. I'm, it's sometimes a little embarrassing, you might say, but I love it here, and I have a great rapport with them, and, and they've been behind us since day one. And Come on, give them a wave or two. I'll <laughs> see what they do. <laughs> just great, Eddie. I get a tingle when that happens here, and you you certainly deserve it. You've been a master and a trophy winner. You've been here since day one with the Islanders, and you must be awfully proud of what they've done. Yes, it's been a great season, a great six seasons. We've come a long way in, uh, in a short time. We have a long way to go, but with the support that we have and, and the people that are behind uh, the Islanders, uh, it's certainly been quite a success story to this point. And gee, we're sorry you're not playing out there tonight. You had a kind of an unfortunate thing happen on Saturday, right? Tell us about it. Well, we were having a scrimmage and uh, we were trying to keep some life, you know, after being out a week and sitting, you know, and we we're trying to do all kinds of different practices. We had a scrimmage and and uh, it was just a freak thing. I'd ran into Brian Troche. He was like running into a fire plug and I had twisted my knee, but it's just a slight thing and it's uh, something I'm hoping will enable me to play Wednesday. I'm going to try it tomorrow and if not Wednesday, I'm sure uh, by the weekend, I'll be ready to play. You're a great penalty killer, and I know the fellas are doing a great job in your absence there tonight. <laughs> Harris has really been good. Well, Billy has killed him off and on throughout the season when I was sick for a while, and uh, and Brian Trache has killed them also, and they're all very capable. I uh, I sometimes worry, I guess, if they get too good. <laughs> What's the secret to penalty killing, Ed? I think it's just hard work, really. There are a few things, different power plays by different teams. Uh, I like to try and kill it in the other teams, and most of the time it eats up the clock a little more. How about Jones and Butler for the Leafs? Did you get much of a chance to see them kill penalties this year? Well, uh, a little, but usually I'm watching our power play, not their penalty killing. But now and then we get a, may try and find a weakness in it, but they've done well. And uh, uh, I think that, again, it's, it's just something that you work hard at, you dedicate yourself to, and, uh, and actually you can have a lot of fun at it, too. Now, do you think the Islanders have this one wrapped up tonight, Ed? <laughs> well, we're in a very good position at 4-1, to one, but you and I both know in playoff hockey, you never really do anything as far as committing yourself to those things. I think if the Islanders continue to play the aggressive hockey they're playing and they keep dumping it in and utilize the fact that they can get in quick and forecheck on the Leafs defense, 
Uh, it doesn't allow them to do a heck of a lot. So really, if we can continue that, 